pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. I, uh, I just flew in from Kansas, and they said, come to Southern California where it's warm in February. <laughs> I bought a little tiny raincoat. Maybe it would rain, but I don't think we've seen the sun since I've been here. But I did live for 35 years in Southern California. Grew up in San Diego, lived in the San Bernardino Mountains, and after 35 years, I moved to the United States. <laughs> it's been wonderful, so now I'm back behind enemy lines. I'm, great. I'm really glad to be with you, and, I'm, and Pastor, I really appreciate what you have to say, because it's time to take back this land yeah. for Jesus Christ. God did not stop with you and me when he brought you into the kingdom of Jesus. He didn't stop with the revival of Chuck Smith in the Calvary Chapel. I went to Ray Bentley's church, Ray Bentley Marius. I got saved 35-something years ago. And I'm proud to be a Christian serving the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. And since we're preaching in Calvary Chapel, and since we're all men and women of God, let's reference the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. So after three and a half years of Jesus wandering throughout Judea and Israel, he spoke of many, many things. All were written down in the Gospels. He performed many miracles. He died, gave his life up, life up went to the grave, and then he rose himself from the dead. And then he gathered all of his disciples on a hill outside Jerusalem. And he said, I have one last thing to say to you. Do you think these words are important? Mm -hmm. The last words yeah. of Jesus here on earth. And he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Amen. Right. Yeah. And I'm not a real biblical scholar. Maybe some of the doctors and pastors here can help me out here. But as I understand the word all, it means all. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to us. And he says, go therefore, disciple the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all things I have commanded you, and lo, I'll be with you even till the end. So the king of the universe, who sits at the right hand of God the Father right. Almighty, That's who right. is making all things under his footstool. That's right. That's right. All his enemies are being placed under his footstool right now. He has given that authority to each one of us to push back against the forces of evil. Amen. Amen. James 4, 7 has given us a covenantal promise. Resist the devil. And what? He will flee from you. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And that has been my life's purpose. I thought I was going to be a Calvary Chapel pastor of, you know, Troy Calvary Chapel pastor of fill-in-the-blank beach. <laughs> I just knew it. Oceanside, Capistrano, Laguna. I had visions of just surfing six days a week and preaching one day. But God made me a pastor of the pre-born children. Yes, and for 32 years, I've been speaking on behalf of them. They need a voice. Yes. They need our voice. These are children created in the image and likeness of God. They're an image bearer of God Almighty. When you look in the mirror in the morning, that image isn't you, but it's a reflection of who you are. And we bear the holy reflection of God Almighty. And then we're empowered to go out into the world with the authority of Jesus Christ to say, Thou shalt not murder Amen. in the name of God. Well, that's your opinion. We were at University, uh, University of California, San Marcos on Thursday telling them, Thou shalt not murder. Well, that's your opinion. It's not my opinion. It's God's law. That's right. That's right. Christianity is the only religion in the world that has a supernatural revelation a law structure that came down on Mount Sinai that told people how to live. Yes. Everything else is humanism. Yep. Yes. Circular reasoning, reincarnation, polytheistic, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Only the Judeo-Christian religion says that there is a supernatural revelation from God Almighty defining how we should live and all men at all times in all places are subject to God's law. That's right. That's right. right. And just like John the Baptist, one man... With the word of God, so told uh, uh, Herod, you shall not have your brother's wife. Right. He defines sexual morality. He defines the image of God. He defines private property rights in the Eighth Commandment. Thou shalt not steal. If you can't steal, guess what? You have private property rights. Mm -hmm. 
right? Don't uh, bear false witness in a court of law. That defines our whole judicial system. It's the only standard by which we should live. Yes. Now, are you encouraged yet? Yes. Yeah. You want to be more encouraged? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Listen, in 1991, it was the high water mark for child sacrifice in this country. Over 1.6 million children were killed, most here in California. Next was Florida, then was New York. There were 2,176 abortion mills in this country, freestanding. Abortions aren't done in hospitals. It's a para medical procedure. It's outside the medical industry because they don't want it inside the hospitals. It's not something that's pretty. And, we've just, and I've been all over the world. I've been all over the country. I've spoken just about every state in the union. And I like to tell people that since 1991, we've gone from 2,176 freestanding abortion mills to less than 700. That's a reduction of over 70% of all the killing centers. What's beautiful is when abortion mills close, babies get saved. I'm results driven, results driven, results driven. If it doesn't work, I don't do it. And when abortion mills close, babies get saved. And pregnancy counseling centers that were almost non-existent in the 90s now inhabit just about every church in America. There's freestanding pregnancy counseling centers all over the country, and they outnumber the abortion mills over five to one. Amen. I was just in Missouri. There's 40 pregnancy counseling centers in all of Missouri, and there's zero abortion mills. <laughs> We worked for 50 years to overturn this draconian law where the federal government mm -hmm. then just wiped out all the laws on the books on abortion and said abortion is legal, or I would say decriminalized. Mm -hmm. What God says is legal can never be legal. But in all 50 states, they wiped out all abortion laws, and they said we're no longer, June, June of last year, we're no longer in the abortion business. And so states can regulate this. States can ban it. And right now, 15 states are abortion-free for the first time in 50 years. And what's beautiful is that we're saving off the high watermark of 1.6 million babies, now under a million. Way too many. One is too many. But we're saving seven, 800,000 babies per year. So let me ask you something. When Jesus said... If you ask things according to his word, or according to his commandment, according to his will, he's going to do what? He's going to answer those prayers, right? Is God answering prayers today? Yes. Are abortion mills closing? Yes. Are abortionists getting saved? Yes. yes. Are Christians doing the work in the field and harvesting the harvest? Yes. And are babies getting saved? Yes. yes. Do not be discouraged, folks. Don't listen to the news. That's right. God is on the move. Amen. And if you resist the devil, he must, right. he must yes. flee from us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I have five copies of this book on how to close abortion mills in your uh, community. And if you want one, I'll give you one for free. And if not, you can go online and grab one. Thanks.